Good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Farmer. I'm a health services researcher at the VA at the center. We're not okay. Center for the Study of Healthcare Provider Behavior. Some of the work I'm going to present today comes out of the VA Center for the Study of Healthcare Provider Behavior. But some of the work I'm going to present comes out of work that I was involved with at the University of California, Los Angeles, as a Division of Cancer Prevention and Control Research in the Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center. Colorectal cancer screening is there's the microphone. <laughs> Colorectal cancer screening is often viewed in research as either a patient issue or a provider issue. But in healthcare, we really need to look at this dynamic relationship between the provider, the patient, and the organization in which care is delivered. So therefore, if we're going to understand colorectal cancer screening, we really need to look at it in the context of three different domains. Therefore, today, my work is going to synthesize work from two different studies. The first one was from the UCLA Blue Cross HMO Colorectal Cancer Screening Study. This project was led by Dr. Patricia Gantz at the Division of Cancer Prevention and Control Research. This study was a randomized control trial of a quality improvement intervention to improve colorectal cancer screening at the organizational level. But along with this study that included 36 provider organizations across the state of California, of which we randomized 19 into the intervention group, we did two other surveys, companion surveys, to go along with a larger parent study. This included a patient survey and a primary care provider survey so that we could grasp the patient and the provider's perspective in colorectal cancer screening. The second study I want to focus on is the VA Practice Organizational Influences on Colorectal Cancer Screening Study. This was done by Dr. Elizabeth Lickiano and colleagues at the VA Center for the Study of Healthcare Provider Behavior. In this study, they linked organizational data, or, or large national organizational survey, with performance measures for colorectal cancer screening for the VA. Just to get some definitions clear on what was done in these studies, for colorectal cancer screening, FOBT refers to the take-home FOBT test, where the school tool is collected on three separate cards and taken back to the office. For endoscopy, we refer to flexible sigmoidoscopy within the last five years, and colonoscopy within the last ten years. And when we refer to any test, it was any of these tests done where one of them was done within guidelines for screening. So let's first talk about the patients and look at colorectal cancer screening from a patient perspective. The survey included numerous um, measures on the patient, including a lot of information. Oh, let me talk about the goals of the survey first. The goals of the patient survey were to describe the trends as well as examine the predictors for colorectal cancer screening. <coughs> We did a repeated cross-sectional telephone survey um, of a sample of Blue Cross HMO enrollees. They were all age 50 and over, and they belonged to our study organizations. We did the survey in 2000, which was prior to the intervention, and also in 2003, which was after the intervention. <coughs> the measures included a lot of respondent characteristics, such as demographics, socioeconomic status, health status, in information on insurance co-payments, and also information about their knowledge of their family history of colorectal cancer and cancer in general. The two measures I really want to focus on today, though, is have you ever discussed colorectal cancer screening with your doctor? And what are the barriers, the patient-perceived barriers to colorectal cancer screening? And here we had three separate domains of barriers. The barriers in general included questions such as, would it be difficult for you to pay for the test? Worry that screening will show you have cancer? Think you only need to have colon screening tests when you have symptoms? Or is getting tested for colorectal cancer screening a priority for you? The FOBT specific barriers focused on those in which the test was actually talked about. How unpleasant is it for you to collect your own stool, smear it on a card, and send it back to the doctor's office? How convenient is it for you to be able to follow the severe dietary restrictions that go along with the FOBT? For the endoscopy specific barriers, we were referred to embarrassment. How embarrassed are you in getting the actual test done? And also, how worried are you that it'll be painful or uncomfortable? Here are the results of the percent of patients were screened. And as you can see, the screening rate was rather low. And I want to put this in context really quick. This was done within Blue Cross HMO. So by definition, all the patients 
had access to care. And Blue Cross made it a prevention as one of their priorities. So this was in an environment where patients had access to the screening and the organization said it was a priority. And yet only 30%, 38% of the patients had been screened. In 2003, it had increased to 50%. And um, as you can see here, the endoscopy rate really was the cause of that jump. And I'd love to say it was because of our intervention, but I'm not going to say that. But instead, it was probably more of a secular trend, perhaps the Katie Couric effect here, that took place at this exact same time as the intervention. Here are the results for three different models. A model for FOBT, a model for endoscopy, and a model for any test, all of these done within guidelines. And what was interesting here is these were the only two measures that were significant across both <coughs> models. Having discussed colorectal cancer with your doctor was the most powerful predictor of whether or not a patient was screened, and it didn't matter what type of test it was. It was talking to your doctor that was important. The barriers to colorectal cancer screening were those that were in general, so worries about your fine cancer, those kind of issues. They weren't the specific issues to the tests, embarrassment or inconvenience or unpleasantness of the test. Instead, it was more general barriers about screening and fears of finding cancer that really impacted the screening rates in a negative way. So now we've seen that the patients themselves have an important relationship with their providers. Their provider is guiding their screening in many ways. Now let's look at the providers. The provider survey that we did, the goal of that survey was to explore the determinants of test use by primary care providers of adult patients age 50 and over. And this was all done again in a managed care setting. It was a mailed survey, we completed it in the year 2000, and our response rate was 67%. The measures we looked at in this project were provider characteristics, such as their specialty, years since graduation, their practice characteristics, so characteristics of their patient load, and as well as their capitation information. And here we focused on an extensive amount of measures on barriers her provider perceived barriers to colorectal cancer screening recommendation. And when the providers were asked what kind of barriers they had, this is what emerged. These four scales emerged. They had characteristics of the healthcare system, inadequate reimbursement, lack of time to perform the test, or absence of available performing providers, or that the reject requests were rejected or denied by the insurance <coughs> company, all things that are related to that healthcare system. There were screening test barriers, most specifically, there were too many false positives. Or that a new test, the positive test, was just too rare in their practice. There were patient characteristics that the provider noted. Lack of compliance. Lack of knowledge on the patient's side of the risks and benefits of screening. And the providers also noted their own barriers. They simply didn't have time or didn't remember that it was time to screen a patient. Simply, a lot of the providers noted that it just wasn't the top health concern that they needed to cover in the limited time in which they had a patient in the office. Here are the logistic results for provider-recommended FOBT, and this is provider-reported FOBT recommendation. As we can see here, the prevention-focused offices had an increase in FOBT. Most all of the patients who had had a physical exam in the last two years in those offices, they had higher screening with FOBT. Also, if CRC screening was a high priority in that office as defined by the, phys by the physician, excuse me, then FOBT rates were significantly higher. Interestingly, and probably not too expected, barriers for the screening test really emerged here as a negative. Um, providers who reported that the positive tests were too uncommon or inaccurate results had a lower FOBT rate. For FOBT, it was the patient barriers and the provider barriers that emerged as negative for FOBT. Turning to the flexible sigmoidoscopy barriers, we found the same results for prevention. A prevention focus increased flexible sigmoidoscopy recommendations. But here, it was having to refer your patient to another provider for flexible sigmoidoscopy that really significantly decreased recommendation patterns for flexible sigmoidoscopy. As with FOBT, the provider barriers were again an issue, but here it was the healthcare system. Again, this was inadequate reimbursement, having your request denied by the insurance company. These were the issues that providers said were driving their flexible sigmoidoscopy rates. 
So we looked at the patients and we looked at the providers and how each is pointing to the other as concerns. But we need to look at the organization in which this is all taking place. The Veterans Health Administration is the largest healthcare system in the United States, largest integrated healthcare system in the United States. We have a complete computerized medical record system, and as many as 20% of the U.S. population are eligible for VA. In the fiscal year 2007, we had 7.8 million enrollees. The VA practice organizational influences on colorectal cancer screening performance project included a survey, the VA Primary Care Director Survey. The goal of this survey was to identify primary care clinic characteristics and determine which ones of those were associated with colorectal cancer screening performance. The survey itself was completed in the year 2000. It was a national sample of VA primary care clinics, and we linked that information to national performance-based measures on colorectal cancer screening. The survey was quite extensive, but the, the areas I want to focus on here are in the areas of authority, sufficiency, and complexity. At an organizational level, those sites that had authority over their primary care, the, where, the ways we measured it included having authority over your clinical structure and operations. This is including developing and implementing guidelines. Having authority over your practice staff range, staffing and human resources, so hiring, evaluating, and firing your staff. And having their own authority over organizational influences outside of the PC. And here this is where the referral mechanism comes into play. For sufficiency of resources, we refer to sufficiency of non-physician staffing, nurses, clerical, administrative staff. Sufficiency of clinical and administrative space, such as the office spaces, and the sufficiency of clinical support arrangements. And this has to do with having an exam room that's adequately equipped, or having computers in the office. Having a computerized medical system would require some having sufficient computers. For complexity, we looked at size of the organization. And in the model I'm about to show you, I just want to let you know we did adjust for all the patient level covariates and the contextual factors, such as urban and rural. The results here are that the colorectal cancer screening rate in fiscal year 2001 at the VA was 62%. The range at the organizational level, though, ranged from 29% to 89%. So we looked again at the logistic model to look at what factors were associated with high performance. And here we found that practice authority for clinical protocols, so being able to do new clinical procedures, being able to set up new primary care components, and being able to establish and implement your guidelines, having authority over those mechanisms significantly increased screening for colorectal cancer. Similarly, for sufficiency, those sites that reported they had sufficient clinical support arrangements, they had, they had computers, they had exam rooms, um, they significantly had higher performance. <coughs> Conversely though, those larger sites also had poor performance. And this doesn't really surprise us, as larger sites are often the more complex sites. And colorectal cancer screening is not a one-shot deal. It's not something where you come to the office and you're done. Instead, it requires coordination across the units. And it's often been found in the research that those sites that are most complex have the problems with coordination across units. <coughs> so let's just, I'll just conclude here with what have we learned from these two studies. Well, the patient is pointing to the discussions with their doctor as the strongest predictor of screening. So really the physician plays an important role in the patient's decision whether or not to get screened. The provider also points to the patient as one of the barriers to getting screened but also focuses on the own office systems, as well as the healthcare system in general, um, in their recommendation patterns. And the organization then points to deficits in their clinical support and lack of autonomy or authority over the management and the referral systems that influence colorectal cancer screening. So what can we take from all this? Colorectal cancer screening needs to be viewed as a dynamic relationship. Interventions that just target the patient, or just tar target the providers, or just target the organizations, as in our C squared S squared project, are unlikely to yield results that are as significant as those multifaceted interventions that can improve colorectal cancer screening. Thank you very much.